today, yesterday, change, percent change. In this tip, I'm gonna show you how to calculate day over day change and show you how to build these three KPI cards. Let's get started. For those of you that are new here, my name's Andy. I'm the global head coach of the data school. I teach people how to be great data analysts and I want you to be one too. So please make sure you subscribe. I put out lots of tips every single week. And if you like this video, please give it a like. That'll help other people find it too. In this view here, you can see I've got three KPI cards. We're measuring sales. We're measuring sales for the latest day and the difference between the latest day and the previous day. And I've color coded whether the change is positive or negative. I'm using a dummy data set about car sales. I'll put a link in the description to the data source so you can follow along. First, let's right click on our date field and choose create custom date. Name it day, change the detail to days and make sure you pick date value. Date value will give you each individual day. Date part would give you one through 31. In other words, the calendar numbers. But we want each individual date. Now, this is the equivalent of writing the date trunk function, but I'm using a custom date just because it saves me a bit of time. Click on OK. The next step we want to do is get the latest day. So create a new calculated field. Call it latest day. Our calculation is simply mustachio max of our day field. And then close off the mustachio. Click on OK. Now we need to get the previous day. So create a new calculated field. Let's name it previous day. Our formula here is latest day minus one. Click on OK. Now we want to get the sales for our latest day. Create a new calculated field. Call it sales latest day. The formula is int bracket day equals our latest day bracket times sales. So for the latest day, this is gonna return sales because the part inside of my integer is true. The true gets converted to a one. So in other words, for the latest day is taking sales and multiplying it by one. If my day is not the latest date, then the integer is gonna return a zero. So zero times sales is always gonna return zero for anything other than the latest day. Click on okay. Create another calculated field that is sales for the previous day. Our calculation is quite similar. We're gonna start with an integer. The day is equal to our previous day, close off the brackets, times sales. And what it's doing is it's only returning sales for the previous day. Click on okay. Next, we wanna calculate the difference between them. Create a new calculated field. I'm gonna call this one sales day over day. My calculation is the sum of the sales for the latest day minus the sum of the sales for the previous day. Click on okay. We now have three sales fields. Highlight all of those in the data pane, right click, go to default properties and number format. We want all of these to be sales in dollars. Choose number custom, change the decimal places to zero and put a prefix of a dollar sign. Click on okay. Next, we wanna calculate the percent change. Create a new calculated field. Call it sales day over day percent. In the calculation, it's going to be our sales day over day divided by the sum of our sales for the previous day. Click on OK. Right click on that field, choose default properties, number format, change it to a percentage to one decimal. But I want to show a plus sign when it's a positive value, a minus sign when it's a negative value. So switch over to custom and our formula, put plus 0.0% semicolon minus 0.0%. The semicolon allows us to separate the formatting for the positive from the formatting for the negative. Click on OK. Now it's time to build the view. Drag sales latest day to the text shelf. Right click and drag latest day to the text shelf and pick latest day discrete. Click on OK. Drag sales day over day percent to the text shelf. Right click and drag previous day to the text shelf and choose previous day discrete. Click on OK. Now we have everything we need to build our KPI. Click on the text shelf Click on the three dots, move everything down the line, and I'm gonna type in sales. Let's maybe make that about 12 point. Underneath of that, I'm going to put my latest day. So let's just move that underneath of sales. Next, we wanna have our sales for the latest day, and then our sales day over day percent change below that, and then versus 
the previous day. Get rid of any extra spacing you might have. And then my sales latest day, I'm gonna format that to be maybe like 48 point. Click on okay. In the alignment, choose center horizontal and center vertical. Now we're nearly done with our KPI. The only other thing we wanna do is color code this by whether it's positive or negative. Let's create another calculated field. I'm gonna call this one positive or negative change. The formula here is just going to use the sign function and we're gonna put in there the sales day over day. So the sign function will turn any negative values into a minus one and any positive values into a one and anything that's exactly the same into a zero. Click on okay. Right click on positive or negative change and make it discrete. Now drag that field to the color shelf and you'll see our color is minus one. That's because our change is negative. So double click on the color shelf, click on the blue and make it red because I want to have red for my negative values. But I need to also be able to color code the positive values. So to do that, I'm going to drag new car to the rows and notice now that when it's a new car, the change is positive. So I'm going to double click on my color shelf again and on the orange, I'm going to change that to blue. Click on OK. What I could do now is I could drag new car to the filters, choose true and hit OK. And now I'm only seeing the latest day sales for new cars. I could perhaps show the filter for that. And now I can let my users decide whether they want to show both of them, only those that are used cars, or maybe only those that are new cars. So that's option number one. Let's look at option number two. In this example, we have a bar chart for our latest day sales and a reference line for our previous day sales. And then we have our same KPI numbers that we had before. Let's duplicate the sheet. Click on the text shelf and then the three dots next to the text. And I'm going to copy everything and then choose reset. Double click my title, select everything and then paste. And then I'm gonna select everything again and left align it. Let's maybe shrink down the font size for our latest day sales. Click on okay. So now we've moved all of our KPIs into the title. Take the four fields that are on the text shelf and move those to the detail shelf. Let's change our mark type to a bar. Drag sales latest day to the columns. To include our reference line, we need to drag sales previous day onto the detail shelf. Go to the analytics pane, drag on a reference line for each cell. Change the value to sales previous day. Change the line to some kind of format that you would like. For me, I'm gonna make it black and increase the percentage to 100%. I'm gonna turn on my label and put on the value. Click on okay. And notice the bar is blue because we have a positive change. If I choose both new and used cars, now it becomes red because we have a negative change. Click on the label shelf and turn on the marked labels. And now we can see the label for our current day sales. Click on the label again, and on the alignment, choose left. Right click in the axis, uncheck show header. Right click somewhere in the view and choose format. On the lines, set the grid lines on, and then turn them back off. Turn the zero lines off, turn the axis rulers off. And now we have a nice clean bar with a reference line for the previous day. You could expand the view out a bit, to make your bars a bit fatter. So that's KPI option number two. Number three takes the text for the KPI and puts it next to the bar chart. Let's start by duplicating the sheet. Click on the swap rows and columns button on the toolbar and that's gonna convert it to a vertical bar chart. My label is still in the center of my bar, but I want it to be above my bar. So click on the label shelf and in the alignment, choose center and top. And now the label is above the bar. Let's make the bar a bit wider so that we can see the text. Double click on the rows and type an average of one. Go to the average of one shelf, click on color and reduce the opacity to zero. Click on size and make it as thin as it'll go. Drag sales latest day to the detail shelf. Take latest day, move it to label. Take the percent change and move it to label. And take the sales latest day, put that on the label and then lastly, move previous day to the label. Click on the label shelf and then the three dots. Now everything I needed was on my clipboard, so I'm gonna select everything and then paste. Select everything again and left align. I'm gonna click on my big number and change the font size to maybe something like 28 and bold. Click on okay. Now notice the bars are rotated. So click on the label shelf one more time, click on alignment, in the horizontal, we want to be to the left 
and the vertical, we want it to be center. And in the direction, always set it to normal. Right click on the average of one axis and make it a dual axis. Right click on that axis again and uncheck show header. Now notice that they're overlapping it. I want them side by side. So drag measure names to the column shelf. Make the view a bit wider and keep going until you get it to the width where you can see the whole number. Now notice that our bar is a light blue. It should be red. So go back to the all marks card and remove measure names from the color shelf. Right click on measure names on the columns and uncheck show header. Right click on your title and choose reset title. Right click in the view and choose format. Go to the borders, turn your row dividers off and turn your column dividers off. And there you have it. You now have a KPI next to the bar instead of above the bar. I hope you found this useful. I've shown you how to build these three KPIs. Again, the data set that I used is linked in the description. If you enjoyed this tip and you want to learn how to do the same thing, but for month over month change or year over year change, check out the links in the description. If this type of card is useful for you, please leave me a comment with your use case. I'm always curious to see what people do with these tips. Lastly, I'd like to ask some help from you. I need help building my audience and spreading Tableau to as many people as I can. I want to help them become great at Tableau, just like I'm doing for you. So if you learned something in this video, please give it a like. That will help others find it too.